Hello, this is Eric of NotBios Tech and Reviews, and today I'm reviewing the Jess LED lights. So, what are some aspects of this? They're waterproof, heat resistant, and frost resistant. So the idea is you should be able to use them pretty much any temperature. And the light itself comes with your garden stake, it comes with drywall anchors and screws, and you can see it even has screw holes for mounting. So let's go over this aspects of this light and what to concern yourself with and how it can be used. Now let's get started. This LED light comes with a user manual. You'll see that it says heat resistant, waterproof, and that it is frost resistant. So the idea is you can use it in pretty much any temperature. The obvious part is that this light is solar. It has a power button on the back that we can see right back here. So if I press it, nothing's happening. Is it on or off? Well, there's a simple way to check. We just put it against ourselves, press the button once, that should be low light, press the button again, and that should be high light. Though the color temperature is listed as 3000K, which 3000K is actually better to see through the fog and through snow. Because if you ever use a bright white light, say 5000K, and you turn the high beams on, unless it's going right against the road, you're probably going to be somewhat blinded by the white of the fog or the white of the snow. So this should help clear your vision. Now for mounting options, we have our lawn stakes, comes with two of them for the two lights, and it also has the screw holes. So this depends if you're gonna be going to drywall, but outside generally you're not gonna have drywall. You could either use the screws for mounting that are included, or just get some wood screws and mount it to where you want. If you live in a place that's extremely hot, well, it could be a problem for the lifespan eventually of the solar panel. Like all solar panels, they are sensitive to extreme heat and so are batteries. But if you don't have extreme heat situations, that's not something really to worry about. Now, cloudy situations, the power charging will be much slower instead of say, three to six hours during peak time sunlight, it'd be more like 30 to 60 hours. So using the 12 hour light for low setting versus high would be the better choice. One thing that's kind of cool about this is they do have some quick tips on this, as you can see right here. And one thing they point out, of course, in cold, cloudy weather, it could easily take six to eight hours. Of course, that will take longer if the weather is quite bad. Where I live, it rains a lot most time and it's very cloudy and dreary so it definitely can take longer than a regular day to get the full charge of it. Now, of course if it's covered in snow it's not going to charge so in cases where you have snow and stuff like that you'd have to clean out the solar panels. Now one aspect of this is it does have a very sharp end. Just avoid rocks because it is made of plastic not metal. You'll notice right away of course that there's something blocking your install. It can be adjusted to where you want the light being it facing somewhat down right up as high as straight up in the air. So you have a little bit of versatility here and then you lock it in place using the screw on the side. I'd recommend having a hand down here as well as pushing down. That way you can get a secure push in without putting too much force on the entire base point. Where do you install something like this? Well for one it might be a place you need some security light. Maybe my light stopped working. Maybe you just want to save like a little bit of electricity because it's solar take advantage of what's outside. Now, if you have a place in your house where you maybe want light, maybe you have to go to the washroom during the night or the kids go in the washroom during the night, you could always install to the drywall inside the house where the light shines, especially during peak time. Most windows are actually treated to prevent some of the light from coming through, so you don't always get full rays of light. What if you don't have any direct sunlight where you're installing? Well, that is not recommended for battery lifespan. You're going to be draining the battery right down and it doesn't charge nearly as efficient without direct sunlight. And the efficiency of the charging is actually listed as 21.5%. In high, you have about six hours of on time and in low mode, 
you have up to 12 hours of on time. That of course is based on a full charge. And this is listed as a 650 lumen light. Both lights on high. Right now I'm seven feet away and go to 14 feet away. Now I'll change those lights to uh, off and we'll do the same thing. Then I'll turn them to low. Right now I am seven feet away and let's go back and now I am 14 feet away. How am I coming through here? Can you see me? Can you see me? Now I gotta turn them to low. So I'm seven feet away, they're on low. That means I have about 12 hours battery life on full charge. And now I'm 14 feet away and of course this is on low. Not bad. So here we can see our solar light and you want to have it so you can of course clear the door. And right now the sun in the morning and such, morning and afternoon will shine on this right here where I have it installed, but not so much in the evening. But this should in most cases be good enough as long as you don't have too much cloud and rain every single day. So I'll put forward and we can see, yes it does look at the light shining off the door, it just reflects back nicely too as well so I can actually see what I'm doing. So if I were to go to the door and I need to get my keys, I now have some light and makes life a lot easier for someone that needs to see something at night time. How do we put this in? Do we cover it like this or whatever? Well, the simplest way to do this is take off this screw right here. Don't just loosen off, you take it out. So once we have that disconnected, we can now use whatever screw you want. Now the one thing is this is tapered, so normally you'd think that you could push it through the hole, but we can't. Because that's normally what happens, you just rest it on the screw. But these holes are not big enough to do that such thing with these particular screws. So that allows you to simply move it around, but it's not going to do anything with uh, having tapered holes. Kind of silly that way. So I could take the screws that are included with this and simply drill it through here. However, in the board I have, it makes more sense to uh, use different ones. I prefer, I prefer to use these Robertson screws rather than these Phillip type screws because the heads are much, much easier to put in and uh, get tighter without stripping the screw head. They work. They do indeed work, the included screws. But if I put in this wall, install it wherever, this would work still, these included ones. Now if I use these, the one problem I have here is your drill bit. You gotta make sure it's gonna be long enough or else you'll be hitting this here. So I need to get a longer bit, an extension. So if your drill is big and bulky like this, you may want a longer end to your drill. There we go. Now I can reattach this here. I'm going to take this grooved inner edge to the grooved edge that you see on here. And we just put it in there. And then we get our end right here. And I screw this together and we are good to go. Nice sturdy built on here. And that's the simplest way to install this is you take out that middle set screw. This is Eric of Not Bios Tech and Reviews and this is my review of the Jess LED lights. Now how this product can be improved is making the mounting holes larger so more standard screw sizes can fit on here to mount to a wall so it can simply be put on and slid down as I show the grooves on the back of this. That would allow such an option. As a yard light, they're great. As a security light, they're great. You just know what you're getting into. This is Eric of Not Bios. Thanks for watching and have yourselves a most wonderful day.